After you've finished your literature review and you've come up with a good research idea, the next step is to turn it into a hypothesis. You want to turn it into a testable prediction. But it's important that you make a good hypothesis. Not all hypotheses are created equal. And good hypotheses have the following characteristics. First of all, they should be logical. They should be like the logical conclusion of an argument. Secondly, they should be testable. All the variables, events, and individuals that are described in that hypothesis need to be clearly defined and observable. Third, they should be refutable. Your, your hypothesis must be able to be proven false. And fourth, it must be positive. You must make a positive statement about the existence of something. So I just wanted to go into a little bit more detail about each of these criteria. Now that first one about how hypotheses should be logical, well, just think of it like this. You know, the, the research, the, the literature review, the research that's been already done, that's like the premise. And then your hypothesis is the conclusion. So it's like everything's leading up to your study. Your study should make sense based upon what has come before. <clears throat> so yeah it should be it should make a lot of sense to the the reader as to why you want to test this idea the second criteria that your hypothesis should be testable that seems pretty obvious you know the most important aspect of science is that we can observe and measure things and you have to be able to observe and measure everything in your study in psychology we like to test uh, uh, hypotheses related to constructs so if you do want to do anything like that, you need to include an operational definition, of course. So remember, operational definitions, these are just descriptions of how we plan to, to measure something that is not directly measurable, such as intelligence or personality. Uh, the third criteria that hypotheses should be refutable, well, this one tends to be a little bit confusing to many students. You know, your hypothesis must be able to be proven false. And a lot of students wonder, why would you want that to happen? And you don't. You don't want to be proven false. <clears throat> but it has to be a possibility. And to make a long story short, the whole idea here can be summarized as uh, if, if failure isn't a possibility, then success is meaningless, right? Like, nobody cares if you're correct if it's impossible for you to be wrong that just doesn't it doesn't matter right like you have to be able to be proven wrong for it to matter and then the fourth one that your hypothesis should be positive that also tends to be a little bit confusing but all we're trying to say here is your hypothesis should be saying that something exists like there is a relationship between two variables or some phenomenon will occur under certain conditions because when you say that something is out there then it's obvious how you could test it you just have to go out there and find it right like we need to go out there and observe this thing that you say is real you can't do the opposite you can't confirm a negative statement it, for example if somebody says there is no phenomenon like this that occurs well, how would you test that? I mean, if you go out there and you don't find that phenomenon occurring, maybe you just didn't look in the right places. Maybe you didn't look at the right times. Fail lack of evidence is not a sufficient evidence. That's not evidence. That just doesn't make any sense. Or as uh, somebody once put it, the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. I don't think that helps clarify anything, but all I'm trying to say is, if you go out there and you try to find nothing, you're gonna.